before we dive into the detailed technical sessions that we have planned, uh, we thought we'd change up things a little bit. Uh, I want to bring on stage somebody you all probably know very well, uh, the forum that he put together, you spent a lot of time on. So let me introduce you to Joel Spolsky. Joel is the co-founder and CEO of Stack Overflow. He is globally recognized expert in software development and known by the developers worldwide for his site, Joel on Software, which has been translated to over 30 languages. In 2000, he founded his first company, Fall Creek Software, which creates project management tools for software developers, including Trello, which I know many of you use, and was recently acquired by Atlassian. Previously, Joel worked at Microsoft, where he designed VBA as a member of the Excel team, and at Juno Online Services, which, where he developed an internet client, which is used by millions. He's also written three books and worked as a contributing editor for the Inc. magazine. Please welcome Joel Spolsky. So we're just going to have a bit of a conversation. I'd like to make this uh, interactive. Feel free to uh, ask questions. Uh, you know, he's got a perspective right. and a, an advantage point that uh, is, is unique. Uh, you're an inventor. You're an investor. You are a developer. Let me start. What are you yeah. not? Uh, <laughs> any of those things. No. <laughs> um, let's see. I'll work on something. Not Did I stump you already? Sports. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's great to have you, Joe. Thanks. Uh, thank you. You know, let's start with Stack Overflow. Okay. Uh, you know, with your illustrious hey, experience. Do you, does everybody know what Stack, anybody know what Stack Overflow is? You want to? Yeah. yeah you, use it? Anybody? Okay. I think you should ask who is not raising their hands. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. It, um, electricity. Anybody use electricity here in the audience? Yeah. Fewer. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, where did the idea come from? And what in your background enabled you to, to get there? Um, I don't know what was in my background. That was um, something weird. But uh, those of you that are as old as I am, is anybody, anybody old? I'm sorry. I was in the hospital last year, and um, they told me that my blood type had been discontinued. Um, that's, so <laughs> when I started programming, we had Usenet. And there was a long generation of people using Usenet to get yeah. answers to uh, programming problems. And then this thing arose for some reason on the web. They sort of moved the Usenet concept to the web. And uh, the big one was called Experts Exchange, yeah. um, which some of you may remember, because uh, after a few years of getting people to contribute answers and questions um, uh, and, and conversation, it was, a, it was a real conversation forum, uh, they put up a paywall and started charging for access to the uh, answers. Yeah. And that was a little bit ridiculous. People would be sort of searching for a problem that maybe they had, you know, they would try to, they would find their own answer was now behind a paywall. Yeah. Uh, and they had contributed that answer um, really in sort of the open source hope of giving something back to the community. Um, and Experts Exchange was charging everybody to access it. So this was... So beta switch didn't work? Uh, a little bit. I mean, there was sort of a historical reason why they did that, but it doesn't matter. No. Uh, and, um, and that's why, actually, by the way, Stack Overflow is Creative Commons to make that impossible to happen, and that's why all the demos that you see here are going to be on the Stack Overflow database, yeah. um, just because we want our data, which was contributed by the community, to be yep. kind of our open source um, component. And, uh, um, yeah, that was really sort of the origin was just, you know, they always say that the Internet, you know, routes around nuclear disasters or whatever. That's how it was designed <laughs> yeah. in the old days. They're like, oh, yeah, you can blow up any node and the whole thing will keep working. And uh, that's what we were really trying to do is route around Experts Exchange. That was sort of the number one thing. Um, and, and then by the time uh, that that actually happened, there were kind of a lot of innovations in stuff on the Internet, how to build communities, how to make things work, things like um, tags. Um, which was um, probably first appeared in Delicious and later in Flickr. Um, the idea that you could tag a question as being both a Java question and a web backend question. Uh, you didn't have to put it in the web backend forum or the Java forum. You didn't have to decide. Um, you could just do both. And that was, believe it or not, an innovation at some point in taxonomies, uh, you know, or really the elimination of the taxonomy. And uh, things like reputation and uh, uh, a bunch of other stuff like that, all the um, quote-unquote innovations in Stack Overflow, like every one of them was stolen from, from somewhere. So is it true you have something like 50 million uh, folks that participate actively every month? Uh, 50 million is the number of developers, like, like human being developers, that will come to Stack Overflow in a given month. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are reading an answer that somebody else wrote. Um, the contributor, the number of contributors is actually kind of astonishing. There's 100,000 people answering questions wow. uh, every month, uh, 100,000 developers around the world. Some of them answer many yeah. questions. If you compare that 
to, let's say, Wikipedia, you'll find that far more people contribute to Stack Overflow than to Wikipedia. Yeah. So do we need Wikipedia anymore? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, and and you know, the number I have here, it says 10,000 questions are asked or answered every yeah, single day. Is that about right? Lower. I think it's about 8,000 right now, uh, questions asked a day. And we don't, um, we're, we don't take a lot of pride in that number because about 3,000 of them are duplicates <laughs> of questions that were asked on the very same day. Um, yeah. I think what's more interesting, really, is that the... Uh, the Stack Overflow project is not a project to, to answer the individual who has a question. You know, one person comes along and they ask a question. Maybe two or three people will chime in with an answer. Sure. You know, two sure. to four people will chime in with answers. Yeah. Uh, maybe 10, 15 people might vote on which answers are good. But for that average question, 1,000 people are going to come later as a result of um, a Google search, uh, land on that page, and, you know, read that page and really get that benefit from that. And the community can expect it to continue to be free, yeah? Uh, yeah, and if it isn't, just go ahead and download the database and make your own damn back over. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, that's one of the things I think what you've done is that's enabled the trust, transparencies, people have continue to accumulate and uh, continue yeah. to hang out at this place. You know, are there learnings for folks that might be thinking of starting about forums or other online services? that they should keep in mind that has allowed you to grow that they can learn from? Um, yeah, there's actually uh, like quite a few. Um, a good way to find the fullest of everything I've talked about is just go to drawonsoftware.com and click at the bottom on the link that says Stack Overflow. You'll see a list of all the blog posts I've made about it. I mean, one of the things, I think the most important learning about communities, um, we're in this era of um, you know, Facebook and Twitter and social networks um, that have a social responsibility that haven't really lived up to. And um, it's very frustrating to a lot of people uh, <laughs> that they're not living up to their so-called social uh, responsibility, whatever that might be. I mean, they're essentially saying, well, we didn't know, we didn't, whatever. And um, the, the thing that I think is most valuable to learn from that is that um, when you build an online community, um, if you can adhere to certain really like core human rights principles almost, uh, you, you'll have a lot fewer problems. And, and predictable. Don't change the yeah. right. Well, that's one of them. So consistency yeah. is the yeah. most important one. It's like if you're treating you know, this person that particular way when they did that thing, then you treat everybody that way. So that's yeah. consistency. Um, and transparency is very important, which is you can figure out what the rules are. There's a way to find out what the rules are. There's no sort of secret thing, which I think one of, one of the um, harbingers of, if you look at what's going on um, with Reddit and, and Twitter and stuff, they get into these censorship wars um, and they'll just tell you, well, we can't tell you what we don't allow on our platform. And if that's the case, is that because they're making it up as they go along or whatever? You have to be, you have to be transparent about what the rules are, and then you have to apply them consistency. And the third part is accountability, which is there has to be a way to get something, some attention on something that where you don't think uh, consistency has, has, has applied. And so there's got to be a way to flag things for a moderator. With a mo you don't like what the moderator did, you've got to be able to replace the moderator. We have moderator elections. Yep. Um, if you still don't like it, there's a whole discussion forum about Stack Overflow uh, where you can go and complain. And those three principles of consistency, accountability, and transparency, I think, is sort of the, like the core operating system that gives you an online community with due process. And that due process is going to, I hope, go a long way um, to giving people trust uh, yep. that, that, you're, uh, yep. um, that you're building something that, that's going to it's going to work. It's this quasi-governmental thing. Not just work, but sustain itself and yeah. grow, right? Yeah. Anybody planning a service? Any questions you have for Joel in that context? No? Nope. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about, uh, you know, again, you see questions, you see language shifts, you see priorities every day and, yeah. and, and kind of the trends. Uh, and perhaps you have a leading indicator of what's to come in the next few years. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, you know, Jetpacks. cloud, uh, cloud uh, certainly is, is, you know, yeah. you heard about the cloud native talk uh, from Abby. Uh, uh, you know, There's not a question of when, uh, if, but, but really when people yeah. are moving to the cloud. Uh, microservices becomes the approach to, to deploying your, develop, developing and deploying your, your applications. Mm -hmm. You know, can you talk about two or three things that you are seeing that perhaps folks haven't yet started talking about that are, you know, we should all be thinking about uh, yeah. two or three, two years from now? I us, uh, sure. Uh, I usually have trouble even figuring out what happened in the past, let alone what's going to happen in the future. Um, but one thing uh, you can look around and see, just to give kind of a big theme to it, uh, the real reason for the rise of Stack Overflow was that programming got way harder. And so, I mean, what is Redis? It's a cache or it's a database. It's a database. But if you were trying to explain this to a person that... Sorry. Let's, let's be very clear. Let's be very clear. <laughs> <You got it. laughs> Primary database. Yeah. Primary database. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, of course. Um, yeah. uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, like the core concept there 
if you had to explain it to a programmer using Fortran in the 60s who somehow like, leapt forward in time, uh, the closest you could come is saying it, it's variables. Right? You have an ability to store a thing and then get the thing back. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of all we really had in that version of Fortran. And indeed, um, like there are entire companies and entire ecosystems built around really, really simple uh, concepts, which, as it turns out, you can then overload with immense amounts of fantasticness to get whatever thing that you couldn't get before, whatever level of scalability, performance, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And um, this is just one little corner of the universe. This is just like I need to persist a thing, or I need to store a thing, or I need a thing to be available more rapidly than it would have been if I had put it in. I don't know, for us, Redis is level two cache, kind of, but if I had put it in level three, then it would have taken me way longer, or I would have not been. In the case of, SQL Server, uh, in the case of um, Stack Overflow, uh, if we didn't have Redis, uh, w everything would be going on SQL Server, and we couldn't scale to the scale that we got on SQL Server. You wouldn't have 50 okay. million people hanging out. Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we'd probably have to have like some crazy sharding scheme with a million servers. And, um, uh, but it's way more complicated than just storing a thing in a variable or in a dictionary or whatever. When I was a visual basic programmer, I mean, dim A as dictionary and boom, boom you're done. And, uh, 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 but the net result is that all the programming work that we do is much harder. And so uh, you know, every single developer in here um, can't really just go to Barnes & Noble and get the book to learn how to do the thing because there's 43 things they're going to have to learn by Friday. Uh, that are all a part of creating a modern application because you're working at such an amazing layer of abstraction that's way up there. Yeah. So what does that mean? If you haven't read that book, that means that you don't really know how Redis works or what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so when things go wrong, and you're getting all the benefit of it, but you're doing it by cut and pasting you know, something from Stack Overflow that you found that works or from the yeah. tutorials. And it works for a while, and then when it stops working, you're, you have no, you're just like completely bereft of knowledge as to what on earth is going on here because you don't know how it worked in the first place, sure. let alone why it's not working now. Uh, and, uh, and that's where Stack Overflow really kind of saves you. Uh, it, it sort of comes in unless you ask those questions or get those answers that have already been sort of pre-populated yeah. in the Stack Overflow cache, so to speak. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and just sort of continue work without actually ever really learning anything. Um, and so, so you're yeah. saying, <laughs> don't, don't, don't go to school, don't <laughs> learn anything, just hang out at Stack just, Overflow. That's yeah. what everybody does, right? Everybody, I think of it as like page <laughs> faulting in the knowledge that you need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just like start with, I don't know, I'm going to type some code, and I don't know what to type, so I'll cut and paste. And then it's like, how do I blah? And oh, yeah, look, somebody already did half of this. Uh, and then you just try to uh, drill in. And uh, the the, you're working at such a high level of abstraction, it's kind of astonishing because you're bringing in massive amounts of code. I mean, it's not just left pad. There are like really useful pieces of code available today. That, that, uh, um, and, and so there's probably 37 things of, of the magnitude of importance of a Redis. So is this, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm a developer 25 years and you know, I've got 40 years of career ahead of me, is it a good thing that uh, I'm living in an abstract, uh, abstracted world and I don't need to know the nuts and bolts? Uh, or hmm. that gives me the ability yeah. to be flexible, to grow faster and do more things and perhaps be more creative? You know, wh where, what's the balance here? I think it kind of is. I mean, one thing I've definitely been seeing, which I really like, is that it makes it much easier to bring in uh, new programmers uh, to the field very quickly and let them do sort of astonishing things that are really useful. Yeah. So. Um, you know, uh, sort of my generation, we would bring our friends over and gather them around the TRS-80 and show them a thing where dots appeared on the screen. <laughs> it just simulates snow or something. And that was like, they would, and the, ki the other kids would be like, wow, this is friggin' amazing. But I mean, like today, if your app doesn't actually like cause a, a, a pizza to arrive physically in meat space, like at your, that is a stupid app that is not worth demoing to your friends. Uh, they'll be like, that's it? It's just like worst game ever. I don't get this. <laughs> you know what it is here? <laughs> um, and you could do those apps in like, uh, in, in like 10 minutes. I had a friend who did an app, uh, it's called Ruler Phone, and, and uh, basically what you did is you took a credit card and you held it up to something, you took a picture with your phone, and then because all credit cards are the same size, you could use it to measure things that would do a little bit of multiplication. And um, he submitted this, and he was having fun. He made like $1,000 a month or something on this app, um, plus whatever he could charge to the credit cards. And... Um, <laughs> The review, though, the review on, on the Apple Store was just like, worst game ever. I don't get it. But I mean, again, it was like a 23-minute coding project for somebody that had never done um, you know, iOS programming, never done Objective-C programming. Um, and I know people that have built these sort of amazing things that have, I mean, Google Maps, oh my god, can you imagine the old days we used to have to build satellites, um, put them into space, 
<laughs> and now you just sort of call the Google Map API, which you don't even, there is a book. Sure. There's like an O'Reilly book probably. It's 460 pages. But, uh, that like, that nobody should ever. read. Yeah, yeah, I mean, first of all, it's out of date. Yeah. came out last year. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, just cut and paste. Uh, and that's what, that's what people are really doing. And, and that um, has made us um, remarkably effective. On the other hand, in some ways, it feels like biology. It used to be chemistry. Like if you do this experiment, certain things will happen. Now it's more like biology where it's like, well, I planted 10 trees and five of them grew. <laughs> it's like, who knows why? Not, it's not clear. Uh, you could try to figure it out from, uh, uh, from, from four principles, but that would be like a, you know, like a, uh, a university to try to figure out why, uh, you know, the amount of knowledge that it takes to figure out why everything kind of works. Yeah. You know, since you're an investor, you've sold companies, I'm yeah. assuming you made money uh, along the way. Um, you know, there's this a topic in the open source community, instead of money here and making everything available for everybody here, they don't necessarily have to come together. Yeah. Is making money a bad thing? Or is that def how you define success? Or uh, how, it's not how, how I define, no, it's not how, I don't, I, don't, I, I wouldn't hesitate uh, using that as a definition of success. I really um, see it as kind of what's the impact that you're having on the world. Um, and that you're making it better. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were, a Stack Overflow was not designed to be a, a company, actually. It was designed to be a project that would eliminate experts exchange. And we had this idea uh, originally that it's like, well, this is going to take at least a web server and a, and a backup web server and maybe a yeah. SQL database. So we're going to need three boxes and we're going to need a high speed internet connection. And uh, who's going to pay for all that? And we had this idea of putting job listings on the side to pay for kind of the operation, and it suddenly ballooned, and now it's a company with 250 um, employees because uh, it's adding value to people, both in the commercial things that it does and in the uh, non-commercial things that it does. So it's really a question of, like, are you making the world uh, a better place? And um, uh, that's something you probably hear a lot. I don't, you know, the Washington Post will lecture you sternly about this, which is that, you know, Silicon Valley and just took it as an axiom that obviously we're making the world a better place, you know. Clearly, every city needs to have scooters on every corner that you can just grab with an app somehow and, d and drive around. Um, this is m obviously much better than the previous world where we had to take buses. Yeah. So as long as you're adding value, you're in the right direction, right? That's yeah. what you're bringing value to so, the people. What, yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's a class of developers that love to just be solo, do great things, and the class of developers who love to work for Microsoft. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, you know, is, is, there, is there kind of your recommendation if you're on the corporate side? You know, what are the things that the developer should be doing? Uh, is, is it more important for them to have a stamp of a good degree uh, because you want to get a job at Microsoft, Google, or oh, it doesn't matter? Well, how would you guide the two sides? I, I don't, uh, yeah, this is something that I'm actually kind of a little bit worried about because um, it, people used to not know how to interview software developers and find out if they were any good. Um, and that was a nice situation because software developers got jobs yeah. and it was great. And, over the years, the knowledge of how to evaluate whether a software developer is going to be successful with some degree of accuracy, let's say 60%, which is way better than, than before it was flipping coins, um, has, has gotten sort of pervasive. So the um, amount of work it takes to get a job, the number of interviews, the interview process has gotten really, really um, rigorous and hard, and it's become in many ways um, randomized in, in, in some way. You don't know who you're going to get or how they're going to interview you um, to get into a job, and it's not... Um, nearly as organized as like, uh, you know, Ivy League college admissions where um, I think there's probably a little bit less, um, at least of a random element. Um, and that's kind of a problem. It's a problem for equity. It's a problem for access and inclusivity to everybody. It's a problem for diversity inside these companies themselves. It's a problem for people that want to recruit uh, the developers that they need um, because they're sort of maybe turning away good candidates as they, you know, sort of try desperately to find yeah. like these magical, amazing candidates. Um, and uh, uh, there's kind of a shift going on here, and I don't really know what the next, you know, the next thing is going to be here. But I, I do think that no matter what you're doing as a developer, um, you know, being really flexible, being able to learn things very quickly, um, and apply the new things, that's a real skill. That's a real skill. Are there qualities uh, that a developer must have to be the appropriate candidate for the enterprise environment? For enterprise versus, you mean, well, I guess yeah. there's enterprise, yeah. there's startups, there's, there's games, there's sure, sort of different sure. yeah. uh, environments. And uh, that's a... Uh, that's another good one because I, I don't know if people know. I, I would say um, uh, t t the enterprise is, is because you're sort of seeking a certain amount of stability, I think, like mm -hmm. kind of uh, where you are in your life. Risk mitigation. Uh, yeah, in some yeah. ways. It's like uh, uh, you're, not, you're not tempted by like, having your own startup and being the boss or you recognize that that's not something that matches your personality or your um, need. I think the people, the, the, the biggest mistakes, I think, are people trying to do startups because they believe that in some way it's 
virtuous or the most excellent thing for them to do, but they don't really have the personality type sure. uh, to do that, um, which is you have to be like a stubborn jerk. You have to be slightly Take notes, guys. Asset. Stubborn jerk. That's uh, a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like there's a certain amount of, uh, like the successful entrepreneurs, I think, are the ones that are just like kind of obsessed with a particular problem that they want to solve. Sure. And like everything else just sort of gets pushed away as they try desperately to solve that problem. And that's kind of what makes them successful. And if you don't have that obsession, you can't be successful at it. So if you've just decided, oh, I'm going to start my own company because that's cool and fun. And I saw the social network and I want to be like, whatever the name, Jesse Eisenberg in the social network. Um, that, that you're not going um, to succeed, actually. You don't have the drive that it's going to take to get through the, 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 the hard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to what you said, something about uh, diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. right? um, and I think Stack Overflow is struggling with that, just like any other forum, yeah. uh, in the ratio of women participation right. versus, uh, right. versus men. Uh, is this just something that evolves over time, or is it things that proactively you um, know, someone in your position should be doing to, to change? Yeah, we should, be, uh, we should be doing something to change it. Um, the, you know, the, the lesson of Stack Overflow, which pervades our entire history, is that we have changed the rules and the mechanics of the Stack Overflow gamification and so forth, uh, the, what things we give badges for, how tags work, how voting works, how flagging works, how comments work. Um, we've changed these uh, quite a bit over mm. time in order to shape the behavior of the community in ways that um, we see as productive. And what we have not done, and is still we really have to do, and we have a... a obligation to do um, is change them in ways that make um, Stack Overflow a more inclusive platform. So um, to describe it, uh, try to describe it in two sentences, which is, it deserves a lot more, um, is that uh, there is a, a type, um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on, but the one that I'm particularly focused on right now is that when, you, when you, somebody asks a question and a developer can respond to it, a lot of times there's a tone in the answer, um, which yeah. is something like, this is easy, or just read the error message, or this is another duplicate. What part of this don't you get? What part of this don't you understand? Right, right. And you only have to spend three and a half minutes on Stack Overflow to find that tone yeah. in the answers. And I don't think it's necessarily intended uh, uh, to be negative in any way, um, but a lot of times it's, it's interpreted. So somebody who is new to programming or somebody who already feels a sense of imposter syndrome for whatever reason, um, may see that particular thing, and it will kind of scare them away from that. I have, I, like, my story that I want to tell, I'm gay, for those of you that it's not, if not, it wasn't in your file, but, um, and I, so I like, um, <laughs> Joel, no, okay. okay. Um, I like One Direction, which is a boy band. Uh, yeah. They've broken up since, but they're all, yeah, Zane, I don't know, never mind. Uh, <laughs> like, four and a half people in the audience know that, because they're all men. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, no. We, we, right. Just so everybody knows, we're partnered with Women in Code. We're trying yeah. really hard, but I would like to see the ratio improve better next time. Exactly. So whatever you can Thank do to help, we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, so One Direction, I went to a One Direction concert, and uh, me and my other two gay male friends were the only men that were there that were not fathers. And you could tell the fathers because they were sitting down, yeah. um, like reading their phones or whatever. And we were like standing up and enjoying the, the, but this is a football stadium full of people enjoying a concert, which I really liked, and they were all 15-year-old girls. And, um, that nobody looked at me like I was a weirdo or anything like yeah, that. There was yeah, absolutely yeah. no shade at all, zero. But I still got this feeling at the end of it saying, oh, God, I, like, I clearly did not belong at that concert. I should not have gone to that concert. Yep. There's something wrong here. Like, I don't belong in some way. And, and to me, uh, you know, if one person had stood up and said, huh, you know, whatever, just like a wink or something, I would have been like, we're leaving. <laughs> Get me out of here. Get call the helicopter. Um, but, th but that's, um, that's what's happening on Stack Overflow every single day, which is you come in um, as a woman participant, as a minority, um, as a n even a newbie, and you're already questioning whether you have a right to yep. be there, as a right to be a part of this community because of what a small minority you're in. Um, and you can almost withstand it, but all it takes is one person to say, right. ah, you don't know what you're doing. Um, and that's what we've got to fix on Stack Overflow. And it's going to be really tough because you can't, I can't like, grab people in, you yeah. know, all over the world and smash their heads together. I think the issue is implicit bias. It's not necessarily what overtly gets done, but just undercurrents. Right. And I think, really, yeah, really, really yeah. hard to see uh, these things. And once you're made aware of them, uh, I think almost everybody, if you tell them, hey, look, look, it, it, you probably thought it. A lot of times they'll see something where somebody says, this is easy at the beginning of their answer, because maybe they're delighted that they're going to earn a bunch of reputation right now for such an easy thing. And they're just, they just feel like they're, you know, dancing with joy, and they don't realize that they're, Affecting it, yeah. They're affecting. Yeah. And once they realize that, I think once we can educate people about this, I think that, um, there may be some improvement there. Yeah, absolutely. Any questions from the floor? And if I don't see your hands, just scream. I think 
There is a question, yeah. There's a mic there, yeah. Hi. Hi, my name is Tatiana. Um, I appreciate that you want to, you know, make these communities more diverse. Um, and one of the things that I just wanted to suggest in regards to this, um, especially at events like this where I'm always turning my head to see how many other girls are in the room, um, you know, I'm all about, you know, freebies and stuff, but what if we took that money and all the sponsors that are sponsoring these freebies and put them towards diversity tickets? Because I know for people like me, coming out of college, I have a lot of loans, and joining the community means attending these events. And quite often, they're very expensive. Um, so, you know, in terms of like, you know, where we're really allocating our funds, um, I think it could also take an awareness and a conscious shift to, you know, maybe saying, hey, you know, maybe we don't need 10,000 socks, but 5,000 socks, and we can take the other 5,000 socks money and put it towards a diversity ticket um, and stuff like that. Yeah. And so yeah. I think it really takes this conscious effort, but um, I wanted to bring that up while, you yeah. know, I could kind of get heard. So. Thanks, Tatiana. Thank you. I'll, I'll take that question. So uh, I totally agree. Uh, I totally agree. I think as we, we started planning for this event last year, or almost uh, nine months ago now, um, that was the very first thing on our planning agenda is to ensure we proactively go and do the outreach to ensure that the barriers of entry are not the, the fees for the event and to ensure that we are partnering with organizations that can foster inclusion uh, and, and diversity becomes a, a, a mainstream approach to it. So I absolutely agree and thank you for, for the comment. Yep. Well, um, I don't see any more questions here. So Joel, cool. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, there is a question. Programming, so it's very cool. It's very cool to have you here. Um, no, I wanted to, to. I am a very big user of Stack Overflow for two reasons. One is that it's full of experts of very very narrow fields. <laughs> for example, yeah. I had to to code uh, uh, an application using using a, a AVX instruction set to parallelize some ne neural network code, and there there was uh, a person that was like, could. Better maybe than Intel engineers. Uh, it, it was aware of every single bit. And uh, I also go there in order to reply to questions. And uh, guess what? Many, many read these questions. I don't know the answer. Because they... <laughs> really, I, tr I try, but the, the, uh, the, the answer for most read these questions yeah. is so connected with uh, specific uh, knowledge of other things, uh, yeah. like or yeah. Java or whatever. So I go there and spend a lot of time trying to reply questions, and maybe I scan 100 questions and reply to three. <laughs> I, I wonder if there is some way that uh, Stack Overflow could uh, make uh, people that are expert in some uh, area to better filter the questions in order to reply in 20 minutes to get more done for the community. Yeah, and um, we're, we're definitely going to uh, try to work on some of that stuff that I think of around like the routing of questions so that you find out about things. There's something. Um, really, the magic on Stack Overflow is not when you have an easy question. The magic of Stack Overflow is when you see a question that you feel uniquely able to answer, where you say, wow, not only can I answer this, but I'm probably the only person that can answer this. And then you feel an extra sense of obligation, really, because there isn't this diffusion of responsibility. Like, if I don't answer this, this poor person on the internet is going to be stuck for a long time. <laughs> but I can just pop open the code and figure that out. Uh, and that's what really happens. That's like the beauty, those moments. That's why there's 100,000 co contributors every month instead of just 38 people typing all the answers. So it's just really rare to know the answers uh, to, the, to, to certain, those really esoteric things. Um, so Great. thank you for that. Great. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Please, round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.